in the book that I wrote, it's not about Democrat or Republican. It's about the system in general, yes. how the system is working, and it's very Machiavellian. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody's doing well. All is blessed on this end. We always praise God for that. MichaelFrancis.com, the inner circle, the crew, you got to join. I'm telling you, we created a great community there. Kind of like my legacy. You will benefit by it. Take a look. It's not going to break the bank. Jump in. I guarantee you're going to enjoy it. We're marching towards a million subscribers. Thank you very much. We appreciate the fact that you are loyal to the content. You encourage us. You motivate us. So keep coming on. Plus, you get alerts and you get all this great content. Today, especially, I got my very dear friend, Chaz Palminteri, here. And we're going to discuss a few things that you may never have heard before, you know, from two guys that came from the street. And I think you're going to enjoy it. So you do know that I have a book coming out, A Mafia Democracy. We've been talking about it. The basis of the book is really about how our government is now taking on a Machiavellian ideology. And you know, when I went to prison, it was almost required reading that I had to read The Prince, Machiavelli's book, The Prince. It was an amazing book, and it's a lot like the street. That's how we, we thought. We had that ideology. I see it today in our government. And you know what? I found somebody that knows a little bit more about Machiavelli than even I do. And we got something that we're going to share with you, something we're going to talk about, you know, during this podcast or YouTube channel, whatever we want to call it, uh, about Machiavelli. So, Jazz, it's a subject I know you're intimately familiar yeah. with. And I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing that we know so much about Machiavelli. <laughs> I'm not no, sure. I, I think it's a good thing. I, you know, Michael, you have to realize that presidents read Machiavelli. Yeah. President Clinton read it. Bush read it. And who else? Probably they all read it. Yeah. Because there's something in there, whether you think it's right or wrong, that you want to read and know about. I mean, these are all the things that, when I was back in the 60s, I mean, wise guys have been reading Machiavelli, for, the real smart right. ones. Yes. Forever. You know, and I know we're going to do a, a show and, and get into depth about the prince, mm -hmm. about the whole book about the prince. We're going to take chapter after chapter. But the great thing about Machiavelli was, you know, people talk about Machiavelli that that book was written by the devil. Mm -hmm. And that was because he was so pragmatic about, hey, I'm trying to think of something other than Bronx Tale, but it's better to be loved or feared. Mm -hmm. Who do you trust? I mean, that was all Bronx Tale. That came out of the street terms, where I put those in the street terms of Bronx Tale. You, if you have to take care of them, don't give them too much, because if you give them too much, then they become independent. You give them just enough where they need you, but they don't hate you. I mean, that's all Machiavelli. Yes. And he talked about staying away from people who are just losers, who are negative. Machiavelli always said that because that will rub off on you. And just like I talked about, you cannot bring a person like that up. A person like that will rub on you and bring you down. Always be careful. Well, this was a little sexist. He talked about women. Mm -hmm. You know. Yes. He said love can make a man do strange things. And we know that. Yes. We've seen that happen. No doubt. You cannot, you know, the woman can make a man do strange things. He said, always hold that in check. Never outshine the master. Never outshine the, prince, the king. Mm -hmm. If you outshine the prince, you're not going to be around long. Always make the prince think it's his idea. Exactly. And, you know, the book, The Prince, Machiavelli throughout the book is advising the prince of how to maintain control of his kingdom. And some of the things that he said really made a lot of sense. Oh, yeah. T you know, today. Yeah, he, he was a brilliant guy. He had a, a different way of thinking, a different ideology, but he was very effective right. in, in the lessons that he gave to the oh, prince. Oh, my God. Think of what he said. He says you can never make a free society slaves. That's right. Or, and you can never make a society who are not used to democracy free. And we kind of said, no, that's not true. We're going to go to Iraq and make them free. And we're going to have elections there. They didn't want it. They couldn't do it. They didn't want it. They didn't exactly. want it. They, they couldn't want it. do it. 
He was right. Mm -hmm. No matter how much the tribes were running it, that was it. You are not going to make these people free. You couldn't change their whole mentality. Right. You couldn't do it. And if people come here in America and try to make America slaves, we will fight to the death. It'll never, ever happen. Never. All right. But he says there is only one way you can make it happen, Machiavelli. And this is where the evilness comes in. He says the only way to make slaves free people or free people slaves, you have to wipe out the seed of the race. Mm -hmm. If you wipe out the race and start over, it's a possibility that you could do it. It's almost like you're supplanting their DNA. You're giving them new yes, DNA. Yes, because it's a possibility. Them. Still, the freedom of the America will come out. He says, but that's the only possibility you might have. Yeah. You know what line always gets me and makes me think, you know, unfortunately, of what's happening today in our government is that Machiavelli, in advising his prince, he said, to maintain control of your kingdom, you can do anything you need to do. If you have to lie, if you have to cheat, you right. have to steal, you can do it all. However, to the outside world, you must always appear to be upright, honest, and have integrity. That's right. And I, Chaz, I'm sorry, but when I look at the government today, you know, yeah. and, and we look at it differently. I think coming from the street, right. having different, you know, relationships and right. seeing things the way they really are, the way, you know, fortunately, I guess some people don't see them. I mean, it's, it's exactly what's happening. Exactly. And when we talk about the government, and I know you're like me, we don't get into political things because the Democrats, the Republicans, they all do it. They're all the same. They're all the same. No doubt. It's just a different club. It's the same boys club and girls club, but it's just a different club. Exactly. And that, I think they're all in it together. I mean, basically. You know, we don't know what happens. They put on a big show, but when they go in the back room and they slap each other on the right. back and they sit down and have a cigar and a drink, right. who knows what, what's really going on. In the book that I wrote, it's not about Democrat or Republican. It's about the system in general, yes. how the system is working, and it's very Machiavellian. Very. You know, we, we are going to go into this in great depth. As a matter of fact, we have a whole series that Chaz and I are going to be doing together uh, coming soon, so stay tuned for that. Yes. But you're going to be fascinated because, number one, you're going to learn a lot from from it. And number two, you're going to see a different side of things, Machiavelli's point of view. And I guarantee a lot of it is going to resonate with you. No doubt about it. It's no going to question. resonate with people. No, look, Machiavelli said, keep the people fighting between each other because the chain is only as strong as, you know, as weak mm -hmm. as weak as light. That's it. Keep the people fighting. This way they'll stay away from you. You know, mm -hmm. with the, you know, the bosses, can, if the crews are fighting, they won't think about how much money you're making. That's right. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. And if you think about it, you go, wow, it's exactly like this, like the mob. I have to say something. You and I, you know, coming from the neighborhood, right. I don't want to say the streets so much because you took a better path than I did. But coming from the neighborhood, being around that, understanding it, you know, I think your son said something to you at some point. My he son, asked you a question. My son has a question. So what was your question? Right. So growing up the way you two guys grew up and your previous lives, is there any time in your life now where those old lives come through, you know, in places like Newport and in Westchester with people who grew up the opposite of that and really aren't prepared and don't know how to handle these types of guys. Well, Michael, you can go. Has that ever merged with you, Michael? It merges every day. I mean, <laughs> it never leaves you. It's a shock coming from the streets of Brooklyn and Long Island and then moving out to Newport Beach, California, right. where everything is different. And I never lost any of who I am. I mean, Sometimes I look back and I say, did I really do those things before? Because I'm not going to do them now. Right. You know what I'm saying, right. Chaz? Right. But, but I'm still, it's how can I say it? The mentality there. is still there. You know, it's like you can take the boy out of Brooklyn, but you don't take the Brooklyn out of the boy. Right. But we restrain ourselves. We try to act a little bit differently, but it, it comes out. It comes I mean, out. It's yeah, not like that. I was telling you before, when my daughter had a party, she was a sophomore in high school, and, and the seniors broke in. They climbed over the fence on my property with kegs of beer. They wanted to break into the party for the sophomores. And when I got there, I got there late, and I drove down my driveway, and I see these people way down there, and I drive up, and I see a man, one of, the, one of the girl's fathers, talking to him, and he's going, time out, time out, you get him, get him, get him, time. He's talking to them like, very nice. Now, that's wrong, young man. And I get out of the car, and I said, what's going on here? 
And my wife saying, they broke into the, they climbed over the fence, they got kegs of beer to. And I'm like, what? And I, I assessed it in a heartbeat. And I turned to the, these two seniors and I said, hey, what do you, and he, and he looked at me and said, hey, take it easy, dude. And went like that. And I just, I just, I can't even say what I said, but I grabbed him in a nice way, if there is a nice way. And I said, you turn around and get the out of here. Listen to me, you little, and he looked at me like he was stunned, like he's never been talked to like this yeah. before. One of those rich Westchester brats, mm -hmm. you know. And you know what? The next day, my my daughter goes, "Dad, everybody in school thinks you're crazy. They don't want to. People are afraid." They go, "That's good. That's good. They'll leave you alone. I I don't want anybody breaking in, climbing over the fence with kegs of beer, trying to get young girls drunk. Okay, sorry. That's the way it is." Yeah, so it, just, it came right out of me, yeah. yeah. No, it happens, and you know, you know, out here, same as uh, probably Westchester, you got that yeah. affluent yeah. thing. You know, the thing is out here, people can be very disrespectful. They'll curse at you yeah. and, and say things to you because nothing ever happens after that. Yes. Well, you know, you come out of the neighborhood in New no. York, you start cursing at somebody, you're ready to fight. That's, you better be ready because be that's it. You, you know, be ready. I had I had an incident once. I'm in a gas station and I'm filling up my car. I've told this story once or twice, and I had an SUV. I get out of the car. Cammy was sitting in the car, and I forget to shut it off. You know, you don't hear the engine in these cars. I forgot to shut it off, so I get out and I'm putting gas in my car. Another guy pulls in in an SUV, and he gets out of the car and he comes around. He's a little guy. He's maybe right. five foot seven, and he stands by the pump and he says, "You know, your car is still on." I said, "Oh, I forgot." I go in, I shut the car off, right? He's still standing there when I get back. I said, can I help you? He said, why did you leave the car on? I said, I told you I forgot. He said, you forgot? I said, yeah, I forgot. He says, my five-year-old daughter would give me a dumb excuse like that. So now I'm saying, oh, my God. I said, I said look, did you come here to talk to me or did you come here to put gas in your car? Put the gas in your car and go, right? He looks at me and he says, you know, you're an F and F. He starts cursing me out. And my first reaction, I want to pull the gas out of the pump, put it on him and light a match, right? That's it. Over. Get out of there. I'm restraining myself. And I'm saying, look, get, fill up your car. And I'm trying to in a nice yeah. way. With that, Chaz, I'm not kidding. His wife gets out of the car. She's standing on the running board. And she starts cursing me out. Just like that. Two people in a gas station. That's insane. It's insane. And so I'm, I'm, holding my, I'm holding my tongue and this and that and that. What happens is my daughter Amanda happens to pull into the gas station. Right. Because they smell these kids. You know, you're in a gas station. They want you to fill up their car, too. Right. So she comes in. And she's seen I was upset. Now, my daughter's, like, really in tune with right. me. She's very feisty. So she gets out, chest out. She starts walking. Daddy, what's wrong? I said, Amanda, get back in the car. Daddy, I said, Amanda, get back in the car. If he would have said something to him, yeah, he would have got gas. That, that, that would have been it. It would have been all over. And she turned around and get right. back. So now I finish. He's still talking. Now I'm thinking as I get back in the car, I said, let me get this bum's license plate number. So maybe I'll catch him in Starbucks one day. I'll be in a different mood. Yeah. But I don't do it. I get back in the car. Yeah. And, that was and you're it. right. And you're right. You got to do it. I was at my restaurant in Baltimore. Because <laughs> I had got locked up. Yeah. You got locked you up. Got, got yeah. locked up. No, now you got locked up. Locked up. I own restaurants. I had one in Baltimore. It's not there anymore. Years ago. And the guy said to me, I never, it was like, I, I was there one night in Baltimore. And he walked over to me and says, he goes, hey, hey Chaz, call me Chaz, which is fine. He goes, let me tell you something. Your restaurant, love the food, love the service, the decor, everything great. I'll never be back here again. <laughs> and I said, oh. I said, well, gee, I'm really sorry about that, but why wouldn't you be back here? He goes, because you were talking to your friend at the bar, and I walked by with my daughter, and I heard you say the F word. Okay, so I said, his daughter was 16, 16 years old. I said, so I don't say, I said, gee, I'm really sorry. I, I was having a little argument with my friend, a friendly argument, and I did say it, and you're right. So I do apologize. He goes, well, yeah, well, I just want you to know I still won't be back. And I said, I, I told you, I said, you know what? Give me a check. Let me, let me pay for the check. He goes, no, 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 I paid for it. I paid it already. I said, well, let me invite you back another time for a meal on me. Michael, I'm laying down. Uh, what else could I do for this guy? Yeah. He goes, no, no, you know what? Sometimes people like you think you can get away with anything. So I'm looking at him saying, is this, I'm offering all these olive branches and he keeps, he won't stop. And then he says, I am never 
coming back here again. I just want you to know that. So then I said, I said, okay. I said, sir, could you do me a favor, please? I know you're never coming back here again, but could you do me a favor and tell anybody that you know, all your friends, not to f come back here? Because I don't want to meet anybody who knows you. Could you do that for me? Please, not just you, everybody. I lost it a little bit. And he just looked at me and went, and his wife was there and his daughter was there. I said, all right, anybody you know. And my friend, my partner just looked at me and said, I don't believe what he just did. And the guy just turned around and walked out. But you know what? I was wrong. I don't way, think at that point you were wrong. But how many olive yeah, branches I say, how much I can, You know, how, how many times can you say you but said? that's but, what I said. But listen, we have a lot more stories from the, and let me tell you something, a lot more. We got a million of them, as they used to say. But seriously, we're going to show you how Machiavelli is alive and well in today's society. And we're going to give you examples. We're going to break it down. Right. I'm telling you, you're going to enjoy it. It's going to give you a different way of thinking, different insight. It's going to be fascinating. He and I will be starting. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. I don't think anybody can do it like we can do it. Absolutely. You're going to enjoy it. So. Anything else, my friend? We got it. We got it. All right, now we're going to go to eat. And let me tell you something. Make sure you go and support. This is something now I'm, I'm giving you some, uh, some good words here. Make sure you go and support Chaz on his YouTube channel. He's got great guests. He's got brilliant stuff that he shares with you. Go and support it. And go to the show. One Man Show, A Bronx Tale. It's going to be all over the country. Click on the link below. You'll find out where. I guarantee, I don't care if you saw the movie 10 times, you're not going to miss this show. It's unbelievable. One Man Show. And this is where it all began. Okay, 34 years ago. He's been doing it. Brilliant. That's it for today. How do I always leave you? Same way. Be safe. Be healthy. God bless. And yes, I'll see you next time. Take care.